Dan Goleman, the famous American psychologist, speaking on emotional intelligence, tells the story of a samurai warrior who approached a Zen master and asked to be taught the difference between heaven and hell. The Zen master responded, I will not even begin to try to explain something so complex to a lout like you. At which point, the samurai warrior pulls his sword out of his scabbard and screams, I could kill you for such impertinence. At which point, the Zen master calmly says, you've just experienced hell. The samurai immediately realizing that he had allowed his thoughts to take control and that he was not in control of himself, took a breath, calmed down, apologized, and said thank you. The Zen master then said, you've just experienced heaven. You and I have the ability to think about our thinking. But like all things in life, some of us are better at it than others. The famous German psychologist Eric Erickson asserted that 20% of the population was incapable of reaching the level of reasoning needed to truly utilize their metacognitive abilities. I'm not really sure if that's 100% correct, but I do know this. To be part of the high-functioning 80%, we have to work at it. When we study success, when we explore happiness and inner contentment, when we look at those who can build and maintain great relationships over a lifetime, we see people who have worked to improve their ability to notice, assess, and modify their thinking patterns as needed to serve themselves and the world that surrounds them better. Like the samurai, as we develop the ability to move from the hell to the heaven that Goldman's story describes, we are becoming masters of the thing that is most fundamentally us, our consciousness, our thought, and master our thoughts we must. If we are to produce the innovative solutions that will move us forward productively in our relationships, our work, our society, we must master our thoughts. There are thought patterns that get in the way of creative thinking, get in the way of collaboration, and get in the way of rapid production of innovative solutions. Here's examples. When we allow ourselves to ruminate on a mental story that upsets us and creates distance between ourselves and others. When we react to a new concept or idea with a habit-driven critical thought rather than looking for what might be good about it. When we do these things, we stifle our growth toward a more positive future. Fortunately, we have the ability to overcome each of these unproductive patterns. To replace self-limiting thinking with thought patterns that serve us. To do so, we must first notice what we are thinking. Noticing thought or metacognition is a key part of what makes us human, and we can each get better at it. So notice. Then we can mentally step back a short distance and label what you're thinking, naming the thought as a thought. Once you've noticed and labeled that thought, we can ask ourselves, is it likely to help us solve the problem or keep us mired in the muck? Does it serve us as a creative human being? Then if needed, we can create a better thought. Yes, we can do that. So the base skill is noticing. And it is a skill that grows with practice. Energize in yourself the choice to be a curious human being and make the decision to find pathways toward metacognitive mastery and better problem solving. Fill your thoughts with this question. What might be all of the things I could do to better notice my thinking and then act on the answers you'll find. I commit to doing the same.